Hello and welcome to the Teenage Hackers. I'm Zamp, and uh, today I'm going to be showing you some basic introduction into Backtrack 5 and some easy man in the middle stuff, which is pretty dead simple. So, um, why don't we get into it? Right now I have an XP VM running, and of course, I'm not saying it's pirated, and I'm not saying it's not. It, it, it's a trial, because it's not genuine, it's not registered. But, um, there we go. I just <clears throat> opened it on my network, ran, um, IP config, see the IP address, 192.168.1.12. Go ahead, if you think you can hack me, hack that IP address. And if you know what I'm talking about, then you won't fall for it. Um, what I'm going to do is hit right control to back out of the VM, and I'm going to boot up my backtrack virtual machine, and I'll do intro into that as well as a bunch of other stuff as soon as it loads that is it's going to take a little bit but uh yeah uh virtualbox if you need emulation software i recommend it it's free it's open source albeit it's from oracle it still works excuse me but uh yeah that's it for that. Um, I'm choosing using XP here, and although this is a very unpatched XP machine, um, I'm using XP because it doesn't need a massive memory footprint. Um, I already did a thing on the podcast how to install Backtrack, but it's pretty simple. You just boot from the live CD and then do start X and run the installer, and then it'll ask you to reboot. You'll have to fix the splash, but after you do that, and reboot, you should see this, uh, default password, username is root, you're the root user, default password is tor, T-O-O-R, which is root backwards, in case you can guess. Um, we'll just boot into the GUI, and it's full screen for me because I installed the guest editions, which allows X window to take up the full thing. Um, so we're booting into Backtrack, Backtrack 5 more specifically, and I'll do a quick rundown. So, um, when you first start up the interface, it'll be like this, except you'll have a different background. Uh, these are all in a folder somewhere on the root of the device. But uh, you'll have this. Uh, you don't have these up there, only the terminal. And uh, under here, under the applications menu, you have the basic stuff for uh, GNOME, accessories, etc. But there's this backtrack menu, which has all of this stuff. Miscellaneous, all services for HTTP, uh, Apache, MySQL, Daemon, Forensics, uh, Network Flutters, uh, Radio Frequency Identification Tools, Reverse Engineering, Maintaining Access, Privilege Escalation, Exploitation, Vulnerability Assessment, Information Gathering. It's all there. I installed I installed XChat because I use XChat a lot. Uh, it's awesome. But uh, there's that. Uh, you also have it's very minimal. I mean, there's a bunch of little stuff. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's it. So what we're going to do is, uh, I'm going to teach you some basic man in the middling. So we're going to open up the terminal. And, uh, we'll just full screen it. What we're going to do is force first to see if our IP forwarding is set. That basically allows packets to flow through us. So it is in uh, slash proc, slash sys, slash whatever, uh, we're just going to cat that in proc sys net ip version 4 ip forward. And that's zero. And we want to set that to one. So we're going to sudo Echo one, and then we're just going to cat that again. So now we can have the packets flow through us like a mystical ghosty being thing. Yeah, that's lame. But what we're going to first have to do is set up ARP poisoning between the two victims. So we need to find out our IP address. So uh, if config, and if you can't find it in this mess, you can if config pipe that to grip, and then you want to look for inet. And we want the inet address, not the inet 6. For us, for our case, we're 192.168.0.6, uh, and that's our IP address. So what we want to do is we want to set up a ARP spoof between us 
and the router and the router and us or our victim all right sorry about that uh issues but uh yeah what we want to start doing is telling the router for this our case is uh the local gateway 192.168.0.1 that we're them and that we're the router so we need to use arp spoof so what we're going to do is i'm going to teach you a little about screen except you need to spell screen correctly uh it's a wonderful little application uh, you'll start out with a new screen, screen session. You can hit Control A, then Pipe to split it in half, and then we can hit Control A, and then S to do that. Um, so now we have a little bit of environmental friendliness type thing we can get our spoofing on. So what we need to do is set up ARP spoof. Uh, you can do that by installing um, the dsniff um, set of tools. And we do sudo arp spoof tech i for the interface. Eth0 is our my in personal interface. Then we want to tell and what was the IP address for this guy? Uh, that 12. That we are. And of course, you do slash t for the target and then the host. So, target and then host. And I'll start telling 192.168.1.12 that we're 192.168.1.1. 192.168.0.1, excuse me. Uh, hit control A tab to move here, control A C to start a new session. Then what we're going to do is we are going to do the same thing sudo. Arp spoof tech i f zero tech t one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot one this time because we're trying to tell the router that we're one nine two dot one six eight dot zero dot twelve. Now we should be poisoning. Hit Control A tab to go into the next screen. Control A C to start a new session, and then we can do something. Soon. Um, first, we'll go into here. I'll move this over here. And let's start the web browser. Firefox is a must for any operating system. And we're still connected to the internet. But one thing is different. I'll show you. We're, we're in the middle. We're mod watching all this traffic, and it's pretty cool. So, I'll show you an example. Um, there's this awesome program called DriftNet. Uh, what we need to do is sudo driftnet tuck i f, f, f zero. Except you need to spell it right. Driftnet. It gives us this little window. Now this little window may not seem like much. It's blank. But because we're sniffing the traffic, we'll go to let's say Google Images. And if I did everything correctly, and we have to scrap this video if I didn't and see what I did wrong. There it is. It's a bit slow, but see that image of the kittens right there? That's on this page somewhere. Didn't necessarily load correctly. My my traffic's a bit wonky. But um Oh, here it is. Here it's going. There is thousands upon thousands upon thousands of kittens. And there's a... Yeah. Uh, that's pretty amazing, isn't it? But that's not all it can do. No. That's just DriftNet. And by clicking on one of those images, it seems that we can do... Uh, sudo URL snarf tech i f0. This will listen to every single URL. Let's say we're going to, oops, let's say we're going to do some hardcore Facebooking, but we don't want anyone. Uh, it, we can see that we're going to facebook.com, 
and our um, what was it called? User host. It's not what it's user agent. That's it. Bam. Terminology for the win. Uh, gives us our user agent and all of that stuff. There's also um, IRC sniffing under message snarf, as well as a bunch of other stuff such as dsniff, which will capture passwords. <gasps> I know. But remember, this is only legal on your network and if someone else gives you the thing. But no one says they have to know because it's almost transparent. But this is only between two hosts. No. There's also a problem here. Because we're sending out our MAC address. So if we do uh, if config then pipe that to uh, blue pussy. No, it wasn't. We'll just grab. Yeah, it's uh, HWADDR. That is our address, and we're on at uh, zero. The MAC address, here's a fun little fact about the MAC address, is um, it gives us our, it's completely unique from vendor to vendor. Not just the interface card vendor, but computer vendor. So the hardware address can tell us who the computer manufacturer is and what computer that is, because most of the MAC addresses are completely unique. That can pose a problem because they can trace it back to who bought the computer. Now if you want to change that, what you can do is bring the interface down change its address by assigning a new hardware address. I personally like dead beef coffee. And then bringing the interface back up, reloading it, and it should be a new, unique interface. And then when you reboot, it'll be back to normal. Um, yeah, so that's that. And that's a little basic into backtrack five, or just backtrack, backtrack and basic man in the middling. Um, you want to kill our spoof, uh, so it's kill all ARP spoof, and then the victims will re-ARP, so, and the internet connection is still there. Nothing's changed. So, there is that. I hope I didn't waste 12 minutes of your life, a little more than 12 minutes. But, uh, yes, close terminal. That is backtrack, the little basics of it. And, um, yeah, it's been the Zamp from the Teenage Hackers. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, have a good one. And stealing this from Hack 5, trust your techno lost.